looking for a mute button. <laughs> Finally, I found it. So uh, I'm Ivan Kavira, and today um, I'm going to share with you my experience of migrating identity server to Azure Active Directory B2C. Um, where is this? Yeah. So uh, this is the agenda. Today we're going to talk uh, slightly about what is single sign-on briefly, really briefly, then briefly about identity server, why my project choose it, then we will switch to Azure Active Directory B2C, then bigger section for custom policies, demo, and questions and answers. Um, so what is si single sign-on? Single sign-on is an authentication method that allows users to sign in using one set of credentials to multiple independent software systems. Using single sign-on means uh, a user doesn't have to sign into uh, every application they use. With single sign-on, users can access all needed applications without being required to authenticate using different credentials. Uh, obviously, it has its own pros and cons. Uh, among pros, uh, I should mention a simplified management of passwords. SSO uh, takes out the tediousness of managing passwords for users. Users don't even need their passwords to log into applications in many situations. Improved security. Single sign-on can help improve security by reducing the number of passwords that users have to remember and reducing the risk of password reuse. Uh, increased productivity. Single sign-on can help increase productivity by reducing the time it takes for users to log into multiple applications. Then comes cons. Cost. It could be expensive to implement single sign-on, especially for small businesses. Complexity. Single sign-on can be complex to set up and manage, especially for larger organizations. Uh, security risks. If an attacker gains access to a user's single sign-on credentials, they can potentially access all of the applications that user has access to. Single sign-on can become a single point of failure. If it stops working, users cannot log in anywhere. However, this can be mitigated via proper redundancy and the creation of backup authentication channel for administrators. So uh, let me describe briefly what the flow we had with identity server. So um, user opens website, uh, website making data requests to the API. The API tries to validate token with identity server. Uh, if a token is expired or is missing, uh, identity server will redirect user to login page. User will authenticate. If uh, authenticate was successful, we'll give his consent or we can skip consent. It depends on settings. And if everything is fine, identity server will return our authorization code. Then website will... Uh, make additional requests to the API with token. In uh, Probably it would be in a head, a HTTP header. Then API will validate token. Token is valid. And uh, after token confir confirmation, API will return um, date, some data for website. It's really brief explanation. A lot of stuff missing like um, Part, uh, parts of uh, OS to flow, but it's not required for this presentation. So um, before identity server, uh, we had a set of legacy web applications with custom authentication, single database, but copy pasted authentication in multiple applications somewhere with basic authentication. And why did we choose identity server? It's highly customizable. You can extend it with C-sharp. We were forbidden to change passwords and obligated to use an old internal crypto service for hashing user passwords. And of course, I had some experience with identity server previously. Um, but time has come and why we decided to migrate from identity server. 
uh, they changed a license, they, it becomes not free anymore. And on their GitHub account main page, they claim that this project is not maintained anymore. We considered multiple options, but uh, because we have all our infrastructure in Azure, uh, client's decision was to go with Azure Active Directory B2C. So let's continue with Active Directory B2C. Azure Active Directory B2C is a customer identity access management solution that enables you to sign up and sign in your customers into your apps and APIs. It is capable of supporting millions of users and billions of authentications per day. You can customize uh, the entire user experience with your brand so it blends seamlessly with your web and mobile applications. Um, Azure Active Directory B2C uh, benefits. It is a cloud-based identity management solution that provides secure access to your web, mobile, and RESTful API applications. It supports multiple identity providers, such as Facebook, Google, LinkedIn, Microsoft accounts, and much more. It provides a seamless user experience across devices. It is highly scalable and can handle millions of users. It provides a high level of security for your applications. And also it has some disadvantages. An Azure Active Directory B2C tenant cannot have other Azure resources provisioned in it, like virtual machines or Azure functions. Azure Active Directory features like groups and roles only apply to administrative accounts in the tenant, not to the consumer accounts that are created by application users. Um, uh, we had a second such requirements. Um, we are obligated to have seamless migration without resetting current passwords. We also need to support desktop client authentication by email and API key and user impersonations. Also client was interested in federated authentication and Facebook authentication. So, Mm. Uh, inside Azure Active Directory B2C, we have uh, two like big options, user flow or custom policies. User flow, it's easy to set up, low, but it has low level of flexibility for custom scenarios. And custom policies, hard to set up. It's a huge XML configs and uh, they, are, they have high level of customization. And because of uh, mentioned earlier, our interest in flows, we should use just custom policies. We can't use user flow. And um, what we, first of all, we need to create a new B2C tenant. This process is covered by Microsoft tutorial. The link you will, will, you will find on the very last slide. So I will skip this part. It's not really interesting. And um, let's start by creating applications in Azure Active Directory B2C. I already created them, so it would be just a set of slides with explanation. And because this presentation would be sent for everyone, you will be able to look on your own how, what steps do we have. So uh, B2C requires us to register two applications that it uses uh, to sign up and sign in users with local accounts, main and proxy application, a native application with delegated permission to, their, to the main app. First, I created the main app with accounts in this organizational directory only. Uh, redirect URI should be a uh, web type and the actual URL, URL would be in the format that you can see on the slide. So basically it's your tenant name uh, repeat it twice in this template. Um, my tenant name, it's uh, quite simple. It's a uh, super company five. So it, it has just as company five instead of tenant name. You will see on the uh, next slides. Also under user permissions, select the grant admin consent to open ID and offline access permissions checkbox and obviously hit register button. 
Next, we need to expose access to the application. We need to add scope and call it, it in a way that would be suitable for you. I call it common. So you can see this name here on the slide. Uh, the next application would be Web API. This application should have the option uh, accounts in any identity provider or organizational directory. Redirect would be also web, but URL uh, should be part of C Sharp Web API project. So in my case, it would be a site name slash web API slash OAuth redirect HTML. After this, we need to expose uh, the API application, grant needed permissions to the application, and don't forget to click uh, grant admin consent for cost for uh, admin because it's a quite easy to forgot to click on this button and without this consent we will not have required permissions also we need to ensure that api allows public client flows it's required for um, implicit flow for Swagger application. Uh, the next application would be a single page application. Register settings are pretty the same as for web API application, except redirect link. This link should be handled by your application to finish authentication process. Uh, so a user should select single page application, this drop down, and type some URL inside your application. And we need to grant permissions to access web API scope for this application as well. For the desktop application, we can keep the redirect URL empty. It will be auto-generated. So um, here is the example of auto-generated link. And basically, we need to use this link uh, in settings for desktop application. And the next would be user attributes. Some of them are default, uh, others are created by me custom. So for example, uh, attribute can impersonate needed to store flag. This particular user has permissions to impersonate anyone. Also, you can find migration required. It's a um, custom field related for seamless migration from identity server. Then if we want to have a possibility to edit user's attributes, we need to grant user administrator role to an application. In my case, this is web API. After this, I need to create policy keys for encryption and signature. Key type would be RSA, uh, key usage, one for signature, another for encryption. So you can see these two containers. Next comes custom UI, a link to the default you can find in Azure Active Directory B2C documentation. Um, we can download default pages and update them to whatever we want, add a company logo type, logo or whatever we want to change. The only restriction that I can recall somewhere in HTML document should be present div with ID equals API. This div would be replaced with an actual authorization form by Azure. Also keep in mind that it would be good to keep this page lightweight. Uh, then we need to upload HTML pages somewhere. I used Azure storage for this. And of course, don't forget uh, to make these HTMLs available for your tenant domain. In my case, it's a SCOM5. So I've added in uh, resource sharing course, allowed origins my tenant domain and allowed methods get and options. Next, we need to create a secret for Web API application to be able to access Microsoft Graph API if you want to update users. Um, and uh, be aware that this secret value would be available just once. And if you will forget it or didn't copy them, you need to regenerate it again. When all these operations are done, we can save all application IDs tenant ID, object ID for B2C extension apps, and automatically create a redirect URL for desktop application. We will use all of them for C-sharp applications configuration and 
custom policies. So custom policies. Uh, now I I will tell you briefly about custom policies, about policies inheritance, and uh, and explain briefly the main sections: claims, UI localization, technical profiles, user journeys, reliant parties, and claim resolvers. So let's start with the inheritance. The child policy at any level can inherit from the parent policy and extend it by adding new elements or override them if elements are the same. On the slide, you can see the general scheme proposed by Microsoft. I'm using pretty much the same, but added one more custom policy between sign-in and extensions. Rewrites policy. I'm using this policy to rewrite IDs for base and extensions policy for different environments like development, stage, production, whatever else. Basically, the common flow is uh, reliant party, then some user journey. It also could show you UI screen and then different technical profiles. So let's talk about claims. Uh, claims is quite close to variables in programming languages. All claims used in custom policies that be uh, policies should be described as well. Uh, on the slide, as an example, you can see a claim with name new password. It has user input password here. And this means that this claim could be present on UI screen as input with type password. Also, it has uh, a restriction pattern here. Uh, where is cursor here? Uh, so password should satisfy some requirements defined here. And uh, this particular claim, it's a default one. And next comes object ID is basically a user GUID in Azure Active Directory B2C in default partner claims types, defined mappings or aliases to claims for different protocols, OAuth, OpenID Connect or SAML. And uh, also an as example, sign in name. It's a pretty uh, simple one. It's a, if it would be present on UI, you, it would be uh, input with uh, just a text box. So next come UI localization. In the user journey, we can set ID of what custom UI we will use. And here you can see a few examples. For the main sign in page in uh, load URI, you can see a link to the exposed earlier HTML page. Also, it is important to mention that in data URI, uh, parameters could be crucial, like contract. It means that uh, JavaScript would be enabled on this page and version of the page, here is version, uh, means that some features could be enabled or not. D details you can find in official documentation because they have a lot of versions. Also on the slide, you can see examples of localization to English and Chinese languages. So basically it's a content definition for uh, just common sign-in page. And it also refers to this English page. And here's uh, as example, uh, some predefined variables inside Azure and we can put text, whatever we want, we can change it and it will be present on UI. But also, by the way, uh, this customization inside Azure has bugs. Uh, for example, when we try to localize some fields for Chinese language, unfortunately, they are not present. They are not uh, out uh, replaced. And we, we was using JavaScript to replace it manually. Next comes technical profiles. Technical profiles are probably the biggest part of custom policies. I think that you can treat them as functions in programming languages. They could have input parameters, input claims, output, output claims, and they can have something in active, as they can say, save something in, uh, in the active directory, persistent claims. Claims transformation for input claims and output claims 
can extend other technical profiles. They can use different protocols, the way how a technical profile will communicate with other parties. It could be SAML2 or OAuth, OpenID Connect or proprietary. In the case of proprietary, we need to specify the handler, a special assembly predefined by Microsoft. For example, it could be a RESTful provider. In this case, technical profile will be able to perform REST requests. On the left part of the slide, you can see a default one from the starter pack. This profile is used to authenticate user in Azure Active Directory in a non-interactive way. On the right side, you you can see the technical profile, which will read additional claims for a user and before giving them back, will return an additional transformation. Uh, we'll add an additional claim of preferred type of multi-factor authentication. And user journeys. Basically, user journeys are steps that should be performed for some airline party. In other words, what Azure Active Directory B2C should perform for user authentication process. The important thing is that uh, all steps should be in order and increments should be one by one. In the first step, authentication process will show UI, ID in the content definition here, refers to the page with English localization, and the tab uh, that uh, forgot password link will be present and what technical profiles will be called when the user will hit sign in button. When the first step will, uh, will return some output claims, the second step will be performed. This, me this step means that if a user account exists, um, object ID present in output claims, um, the step will be skipped. Otherwise, custom policy will try to go with one of two options, register account or reset user password. In the third step, if output claim from previous step is forgot password exists, the user will be redirected to a sub journey for a password reset flow. Reliant parties. Uh, probably you can consider reliant parties as an endpoint for authentication. You're referencing the user journey, which should be performed. Um, here is reference ID. Should be performed. What protocol of, of authentication would be used and what output claims will be present in, a, in the bearer token? So here is this list. We, we can predefi use some predefined claims, or if we want, we can use some um, custom string. For example, here it adds local. It could be useful if you want to know from what uh, reliant party authentication requests comes. Claims resolvers. I can say too much about claims resolvers. Basically, it's a internal variables or constants inside Azure Active Directory B2C. Here is a fragment of my authentication for desktop client. It's input claims for uh, REST for a REST call to my API to validate user API, but inputs for flow are username and password. Uh, and API expects to get email and API key. So I'm using a mapping between, for example, password and API key and passing password from OpenID Connect protocol flow. And after we switch to Azure Active Directory B2C, we enabled seamless migration, how our new flow looks like. Um, our web application uh, perform authorization requests to Azure Active Directory B2C endpoint. It validates uh, uh, validate credentials if user is not migrated yet. On identity server, basically it would be REST call with user credentials and identity server will say true or false, is it correct or not. If everything correct, login uh, validation response will come to Azure Active Directory B2C authorized point 
and um, Active Directory will rehash and store this password inside Active Directory and also will update uh, is migration required flag. So next time when user will try to authorize, he will not be redirected to identity server. Also, Active Directory will return authorization code. Application will get token by authorization code from Active Directory B2C token endpoint. And via this access token, uh, we will be able to call API. And it's time for demo. The demo would be quite simple. I will show you scenarios that I described to you earlier. And because we don't have enough time to cover everything, I will propose you to choose in what part you want to dive deeper, C-sharp application configuration or custom policies. So let me bring up browser. And uh, first of all, let me show you like uh, samples of old application. I have my application web, web client and I'm also running Swagger. Yeah, would be better to make it this way. So first of all, I didn't bother myself with hunting all these links because it's just a sample. So I'm able to open this page, but, but if I will try to open, for example, profile, it will redirect me to some authorization endpoint, uh, and this point runs uh, in identity server. So let me, oh, I can, would be slightly faster if I will just copy my credentials. And by the way, as database, I am using SQLite to simplify my life. Save. So now I will be able to see my profile data. Also, I will be able to open some protected area and I'm be able to see all users present in database. And for example, I can open another user and impersonate him. It shows me unauthorized because particularly this page is available just for admin users only. But if I will open profile, now it shows me that I am not Ivan Kavira, but some John Smith. Okay, I'm authorized. And if I will try to open in Swagger, I should be able, yeah. This is an example, what do we have? for single sign on and also let me run desktop client. It's a super simple. It's launching and here is a very simple WPF application. I also hard coded values, um, API key comes from data from the database. So basically I just copied this field. I can hit login. It says that I'm succeeded and now I can get some data from the API. Basically it returns me amount of users in database. So it's a just a sample uh, what should we support in Active Directory B2C applications. So next, uh, next comes our Azure Active Directory application. It has slightly different URL and it's, a, it's a just an example. Now we will have an error because right now we have no users inside database. So I will enter my credentials. and we can seem to find your account. It's obvious because in Active Directory, currently I don't have uh, users. So basically users. And you can see just my admin account and that's all. But 
we have in a Swagger migrate users endpoint, try it out, execute, and it will create for these two users accounts in Active Directory with random strong passwords. Um, because we don't know uh, passwords of these users, we can just rehash their passwords. We have we had options uh, to reset their passwords, but client declined this option, and we should support seamless migration. And now, if I will click sign in, first time will take slightly more time because it should validate data inside um, identity server. After this, it created. Uh, let me show it to you. Bearer token with. users list where is it bearer token control c something wrong i guess i copied everything No. Okay. Doesn't really matter so far. Um, basically, I am authorized from Active Directory B2C, and I can see as admin users also uh, be able to open page with users list. And now I will be able to impersonate this user. I have added uh, artificial pause for impersonation because it requires to change that flag that I showed you earlier in a user attribute section. And it's not updated immediately. It has some uh, timeout inside Azure. So we should wait a few seconds for this. It will automatically redirect, yeah. Uh, it's a part of uh, flow which called on behalf of inside Azure Active Directory B2C. And here shows email of users that we want to impersonate. Also, we are not able to change it manually here, or if I will try to edit it with inspector and edit HTML, it will not allow me to impersonate a different user. So I'm signed in. And now I am not able to access user list. And if I will try to open profile, it will show it will show me data for this particular user. And pretty much the same behavior we have for the desktop application. Let me show it to you. So the same login and the same get data from API. And it's probably that's all that I can show you briefly regarding our flows that we needed to support. So uh, we have enough time to dip into something, but uh, what you would prefer? Custom policies, I can show you my configs, my huge configs, or you want to see configuration of uh, C-sharp applications. Anyone? Okay, so let it be probably, let's start briefly from custom policies because I suppose they would be super boring. So we have a bunch of files and um, on the very bottom, uh, from inheritance standpoint, we have uh, base file, then comes localization file, extensions file, then uh, comes that I mentioned rewrites file, and then we have uh, custom policies as endpoints, basically relying parties for different uh, flows. So for example, 
just uh, sign up or sign in. Um, I also use in deployment mode development and user journey record endpoints. So basically I'm able to uh, log everything uh, what's happening inside custom policy in um, Azure application insights. And also on the official doc documentation page, you will be able to find plugin to connect uh, application insights into uh, Visual Studio Code and you will be able to see it here. Uh, so uh, here we have all steps that we need to perform to authorize authenticate client and on the very end, for example, we have JWT issuer, which basically will return set of uh, data from Azure Active Directory. And very first step, it's a show custom UI. Um, in extensions, we have some settings additional for this custom UI, like uh, show sign sign up link false. It means that sign up link would be absent on this page. And in localization, uh, this ID means that we have just to support English language and somewhere here in file we have whole bunch of uh, localization strings for English language, for Ukrainian something, and something for English as well. And in base, we have set up for this uh, custom UI, we have this HTML and I can show you this HTML, how it looks like. So basically this is it. Um, as an example, I've taken default page and just added few things like uh, some CSS, uh, jQuery was added by Azure automatically because of version mentioned in data URI, this version supports jQuery. So I'm able to use jQuery here and have some functionality to show icons to show password. And as I mentioned previously, here is the main part this ID would be replaced with um, actual form for authentication. We don't know how it looks like. We can uh, see it when we will open it. Um, if we want to change some styles, we should load it at first. And then after replacement, we will see what IDs, classes, whatever we have there, and we will be able to change them. So, um, as I said, it will propose us to sign in with email or forgot password. So if I will search for this ID, it will show me that it present in the claims exchange section. It leads us to this technical profile. and search uh, shows the same that we have uh, in extensions and base. So for base, it has some default settings and in extensions, uh, I'm overriding something and adding some additional flows uh, to support uh, migration from different identity provider. As I said, it could be very boring. So let me show something probably inside uh, Visual Studio. So as configuration, I have 
API URL because I know I should know where to send my request to get some data. And here comes uh, configuration from Azure. As you can see, uh, OS client ID um, contains inside OS redirect URI and this ID also present. in applications, desk, desktop application. OS tenant also required, OS B2C host, uh, what sign-in policy I'm using, and uh, scope also, I should send the scope to be able to access web API. And then comes some boilerplate code to read configuration file um, and yeah, right here, I'm connecting to identity provider. It returns me access token and then I am able to use this access token to access uh, API. And almost the same we have for the for the web clients. For example, Angular application, it has also information about tenant ID, client ID, uh, but different impersonation policy and different uh, sign-in policy. And all the settings, um, used for authentication. It's almost boilerplate code. Also, all this code would be present in my public repository. So feel free to in investigate what you can take from it. And the same for web API application. I have some settings to connect to Azure Active Directory and to be able to send requests to Graph API to edit my users. And probably that's all that I wanted to share with you. Uh, where's presentation? Uh, wrong screen. So I suppose it's time for questions and answers. Yeah, guys, if uh, someone has question, please unmute and ask. <laughs>